Hey YouTube, um, welcome to my tutorial. It's the first one that I'm making for my ongoing website. And uh, basically I'm going to show you how to turn these steel cans into these models, uh, which are based on real world uh, machines and such. And you can also see more intricate uh, designs. Uh, for example, uh, you can see that's a little tank uh, that I'm working on. It's going to have a moving turret and it has gears inside and it's a work in progress. I basically wanted to um, make a uh, just a build log for this um, model, but I've decided since I'm going to make a tutorial, then why not uh, incorporate the build in it? And that's how I can show all the basic techniques that you need to learn and uh, the tools that you're going to use and everything that revolves around this. So, um, first of all, um, it's, a, it's a very um, simple hobby, you don't need expensive tools, you don't need a workshop for it, uh, you just do it on your table um, in your living room, so you don't need to invest in any power tools or such. I'm going to cover the basic tools that um, I'm using. So, the most basic tool is this, this um, Steel sheet scissors, I think you call it in English. Very basic tool. Um, many people who do the DIY uh, work at their home will probably have this. But um, I use this tool mainly to um, process the raw can. And uh, I will remove the bottom part and the top part and I will cut the seam in the middle. And once I extract the workable material out of it, then uh, I no longer use this. I have a smaller uh, scissors here, which is, it's not a dedicated tool, uh, it's a gardening tool. So uh, it's just used, uh, it's a hedge trimmer, I think you call it. And uh, it allows me to make more delicate cuts and uh, like cut uh, circular and elliptic shapes. Uh, other than that, when I'm cutting straight lines in the material, I basically use a aluminum ruler. Uh, it's handy to have a ruler, but it can be any straight piece of aluminum that you can use as a, as a guide. And a utility knife. So you can see it's just a, a utility knife. Very cheap things that I bought at the store. And uh, you can see it has a blade here. You can also use these but they're made out of plastic and they, they tend to break since you're applying pressure to it. So I like this thing. This is, this is the main, main uh, uh, tool that you're going to use uh, to cut the sheet metal. Other than that, I have a small hammer. It's a 200 gram hammer. I uh, don't use it really. I use it to like uh, fix small dents and uh, whenever I need to hammer something, uh, mark centers uh, for holes and such. And a handy tool which, uh, which I found is this, if you don't know what this is. This is uh, a tool used to like uh, punch holes and belts and leather and rubber and whatever you want to punch holes in. It has these templates you can turn around and it works for the sheet metal just great. So you don't really need this at the beginning, uh, it's just when you start to make uh, holes. Um, the only dedicated tool that you're going to need to probably buy is a soldering iron. Not everybody have it at home. It's a 60 watt soldering iron. You don't want to go any lower than 60 watt. Um, you want to keep it between the 60 and the 100. That's a, a good temperature to work with the, the metal. Um, you buy this little sponge, this little sponge here, it's, it's like for scraping, it's like for cleaning dishes. Uh, you need it to clean the, the, the solder. I'm going to later show you how to work with this. It's not really important, it's just to show you these, uh, these tools that we're going to use. And uh, naturally we have our soldering material and we have our flux that we're using. It's a box of flux. We're going to learn how to use this uh, later on. And I have all these like general purpose tools. I have these 
nose pliers that I use to grab material with, and a little band saw. You don't really use it for the model, you just use it when you need to like cut pieces of wood and things that will help you uh, uh, maneuver, maneuver. Uh, sorry, and um, like work with the with 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 the with the model. Um, okay, so those were the basic tools. Oh, I also have a vise, so you use a small vise. I didn't go for a table vise because you don't really need it. This is like heavy enough to, to, to hold all the parts together. We're not dealing with really heavy heavy steel here. And uh, the the nice thing you can put your thing, you can position it in different. Uh, ways that are more comfortable for soldering, so this is uh, a good vice. It's all um, not expensive stuff, but um, yeah, it's about 50 euros. Um, this cost me about 10 euros, and this cost me about 2 euros. And with the vice all together and the soldering, cheapest model on the market. Uh, the important thing about the solder is that you want to get a flat tip. You don't want to have a pointy tip that's used in electronics. You want to have a flat tip so that the heat is conveyed to the material more efficiently. And uh, sanding paper. And that's about it. We covered all the tools that you're going to need for this. Now, don't think about the tools too much. Uh, just to show you an example, uh, you can use, um, before I bought this thing, I was just using these shears, it's, a, it's again a hedge trimmer, a bit heavier one, but it worn out, so I bought a dedicated tool, and you can basically just cut it with every scissors that you have, this is the sheet metal, this is a piece that is already processed, and um, you can just cut it with your uh, normal scissors that children buy for schools and such. And you don't really need heavy, dedicated things, but yeah. Okay, so another thing I want to cover is um, safety. So use glasses. Uh, I already have them. They prevent any sort of shards from flying directly at me. It's not really an environment where you would say things can come from the side, but uh, have some glasses on when uh, when you're working with the material before you solder it you can just uh, uh, work with it with bare hands but once you start using the solder and that means that there, there's going to be flux on the material then uh, you want to use uh, these disposable vinyl gloves you can just buy them in packs of a hundred and you want to have rulers when you want to create your templates just plastic rulers of all shapes and that's it so we cover the tools and we cover the safety so now we're going to talk a little bit about the cans um, you're probably asking yourself what where can i find these cans what sort of cans can i use can i use any can well we have two types of cans on the market. We have uh, aluminum cans and we have steel cans. Now, how do we know the difference between the two? We take a magnet. It's a small magnet that I have extracted from uh, a small headset. And we put the magnet to the can and we see that it doesn't stick. So, we know that this can is made of Aluminum. Aluminum doesn't work for us in our hobby. We're only looking for steel. So we have another can here. This is a can of beer. It's a local beer. Very tasty. And we take our magnet and we put it on the can and we see that the magnet sticks. So we know that this can is made out of steel and we can put the magnet on all the sides of the can. When we put it on top, we see that it doesn't stick. So that means that the top is made out of aluminum. But we know that this is a steel can. Now, rule of thumb is that soda cans and beer cans, they're not really good for us. The material is too soft. Even though this is steel, this is made in a different process. This is 
This is a can made out of uh, an extrusion process and it causes the steel to be very thin and then it, it, it won't retain the structures that we're trying to, to make. So soda cans, beer cans, they don't really work for us. What we're left with is these cans that you can find anything in them. This is a syrup can and I've seen this design of a bottle. You can also buy like motor oil in this so it's just a generic bottle that they buy. And we take the magnet and we see that it sticks so we know that this is um, uh, steel and they used to call it tin cans but it's not really made out of tin it's a sheet of steel and it's covered with a thin layer of tin from the inside to prevent any sort of uh, 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 rusting from the inside but uh, it's basically uh, steel cans nobody uses tin anymore it's, it's more expensive um, so we know that this is steel, we stuck our magnet to it, so we know that it is steel. The second thing that we're looking for is this seam here. So the can, it has a seam, and that, seems, uh, that seam tells us that this can was initially a flat sheet of metal, and they have bent it, and they've turned it into the cylinder shape. If we look at the beer can, you can turn it, but you won't find any seam. And even if you open it, you won't find any seam inside, and that is because this was made through an extrusion process. So that is why the, the metal is thinner, and this uh, sheet of metal, once we open it, you can see that uh, the natural thing that it wants to do, it wants to fold back open to its initial state. Um, so we have the seam. Now, you have different shapes of cans uh, that, that you buy. This is, for example, another can that used to hold uh, olives inside. I take the magnet and I stick it so I know that it is steel. And I have a seam here, so I can also see the seam from the inside. We have a seam, but we have this, this rigid surface here, which they make in order to make the can more uh, rigid. and. Uh, we're not really left with any material that we can work with. So we have this little flat surfaces here, but once we remove the bottom and the top, uh, we, we almost have nothing left to work with. So these cans are also not that good. We're stuck with a can that the magnet sticks to, it has a seam in the middle, and it has a flat surface on it. And then we know that this can we can work with and we can process it and you don't find these only uh, with food items as I said uh, uh, motor oil and um, household uh, chemicals and detergents they, they come in steel cans and you also have these cans that you can buy like at household uh, uh, item stores and people use them just to store food here and uh, again you can see the seam right here you can even feel it and the magnet will stick to it and it's a flat surface and it gives us good material to work with you have boxes so this is a steel box there you go you can see now you're probably asking why don't you just buy the ready sheets of steel well because you can't find them really it's not it's not something that is used in everyday life you, you can't just go to a store and ask for a4 size sheets of uh, 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 steel and um, basically if you want to order them online uh, one sheet will cost you more than this box which cost me one and a half euros and you get here about three a4 size sheets and you can even see that it has a seam here so that means that this whole part here is one long strip that they have bent and jointed here at the top so that gives us good long material um, okay so you learned um, about the cans and you learned about uh, the tools that we're going to work with 
I'm trying to keep these tutorials uh, small, so um, uh, I'm going to end it here. I hope you liked it. I know that I stutter and it's going to get better in time, but um, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.